Hey everybody, <clears throat> today we're doing one proportion Z test. I apologize if this quality is going to be a little off, but it's Friday night at 7.40 and I just want to get this done for you guys so I can enjoy my weekend. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at some of these things here. Uh, first of all, doing a hypothesis test for a proportion. We want to claim, test some claim about the population proportion as to what's going on. And that's why this first thing says data must be categorical. You fall into a category or not. I filled this out before, but I've been having a little trouble. Our null hypothesis is what we claim to be true. Our alternative hypothesis is really what we're trying to prove. Um, <clears throat> and realize, we claim that this is true. So everything that we run is based off of this idea that this hypothesis is true. After we do that, we get a, st a statistic, a value from our sample, and then we run through and we see how likely is it to get that value if the null hypothesis was true. And that's the definition of p-value. If the null hypothesis is true, chance of getting a statistics this extreme or more. Um, and just going over our hypothesis, remember our null hypothesis would be p equals, and our alternative could be p does not equal. That means it would be different. Um, and in that case, what we would be talking about is a two-sided test greater than or less than a one-sided test. And our um, things that we have, we must have a random sample, 10% of the population, and then it must be large, so n times p is bigger than 5, and n times 1 minus p. Now, uh, people that aren't my students, uh, your teacher might use 10 there, and that's totally okay. I just like to live on the edge and go with 5. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. If you're at home and you want to pause to read it, I'll give you a chance to do that but I'm going to continue on. So our null hypothesis for this problem would be that p is equal to 0 0.20. Uh, we think that uh, we want to try to prove our alternative that more than 20%. So p would be greater than 0.20. <clears throat> this would be a one-sided test. We need to say where p is the true proportion of cars in this fleet out of compliance. All right, well, since we're here, let's let's do type 1 and type 2 errors real fast because that's a good thing that we can go ahead and take a look at. Um, and we should do that before. So a type 1 error is when we reject, a, reject the null hypothesis when HO is true. So we incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we would reject the fact that P is 0 0.20. We have evidence that shows more than 20% of cars are out of compliance when really they're not. Okay, so we have evidence shows cars are out of compliance, but they're really okay. Where a type 2 is where we fail to reject the null hypothesis when HO is false. All right. So in that case, I would show evidence that the cars are good, but they're really out of compliance. Shows cars are good. but they're really out of compliance. Uh, all right, so there we go. So there's type 1, type 2 errors as we kind of look at those. Again, so remember, type 1 can only occur when I reject the null hypothesis, and type 2 can only occur when I fail to reject. Okay, so let's go back to what we have now and see what we have. And again, feel free to pause this video at any time if you want to catch up with anything. All right, let's do our conditions. So we're to, uh, told that it's a random sample. Yep. And if you think of why that is, again, you wouldn't put this on your paper, but that means the mu of p hats are equal to p, that that's an unbiased estimator. If I took all possible samples of 53 cars, it would be centered at the value of p as to what it should be. Um, all right, my next condition is we have to have must be more than 10%. 53 times 10 would be 530 cars, and we're good to go. We told there was 1,500. And again, the idea behind that is the standard deviation of these p hats would be equal to the square root of p, 1 minus p, all over n. That's why I need that, okay? This condition lets me use this formula. This isn't meant, I can't use that formula, but that's not part of the AP statistics. 
Okay, last one we need to check normality. And so what we want to check here is n times p greater than or equal to 5 is n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 5. So we would have, now realize I'm using p, which might be different than what you'd use in a, in a confidence or we'd use p hat. But we have this assumption and we're saying, assuming 20% of cars are out of, are out of compliance, what's the probability of getting a p hat like this? All right, and so that's what we're taking a look at here. So we've got uh, 53 times 0 0.20, which is 10.6. We're good. And this one would be 53 times 0 0.8, which is going to leave us with 42.4, <coughs> uh, uh, which is also greater than 5. And remember, that's the idea behind normality. Okay? So what do I do next? I've stated my alpha level already. But now what I'm going to do, this is a one proportion Z test. I'm going to write my formula, even though it's right above us, V hat minus P. And again, notice, you know, I can't emphasize enough that these are P's here because we're assuming that this is true. All right. So I go through and do the math. So I got 17 out of 53. Let's see what that is. Should have probably done this before. 32.32 uh, minus 0 0.20 divided by the square root of 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 all over 53. If we had all samples of 53, how likely would it be to get this? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run my test. I'm actually going to show you the calculator steps for this. So if you go menu, statistics, Stat test, right there, one prop Z test, number five. My null hypothesis is that P is 0.2. Successes would be 17 out of 53. And my alternative is that P is greater than, so I want to do greater than. There we go. Hit enter, and check out all this nice stuff that we get back. There's my Z test statistic. Okay, well, before I move that away... There's my p-value, p-hat, and n. It gives us everything right there. So here's my z-test statistic, 2.2. My p-value is equal to 0 0.014. So let's just interpret that real fast. <coughs> the p-value means if 20% of cars were out of compliance, I would get a sample proportion of 0 0.32, 0 0.14% of the time by chance. And notice that's so unlikely, 0.14% of the time. It's almost, it's very unlikely to happen. One out of a thousand times, one out of a hundred times it happened just by chance. Therefore, since that's unlikely to happen by chance, what do you think I'm going to say? Well, I'm going to say that this is super unlikely, but is it less than this alpha level that I set? All right, and that's the thing. We needed evidence that it had to happen less than one out of a hundred times. Mine would happen... Uh, 1.4 times out of 100 in the long run. So it's not going to be strong enough. So 0 0.014 is greater than 0 0.01. So I fail to reject HO. We don't have enough evidence to say the proportion out of compliance is greater than 0.2. All right, and so there you go. Now, <clears throat> you know, we wanted strong evidence. What type of a mistake could I, what type of error could I have made? Well, I could have made a type 2 because I failed to reject that null hypothesis. And now an interesting point to talk about is, you know, how does that alpha level affect? Well, they said we need 1%. But think about it. If I use 0.05, I would have rejected. 
Okay, so that's why when we reject, we always throw those words statistically significant because statistically it is significant. Um, you know, now just something to talk about, you know, the difference between uh, statistically significant and actual significance. You know, this would be very unlikely to happen by chance. There's probably something a little off here. You know, how could we test this out? You know, we could maybe take a bigger sample size and, uh, and go from there. That would give us some less variability. Um, but we could do things like that. All right, so there's how you solve this problem. Um, you got the two on the back to get some practice.